Today, uh, we are going to uh, we, uh, present officially uh, the results of the um, campaign with vibrobachtum.org and uh, you can see it. Just a second. Hopefully. So, yeah, here you go. Ta-da! <laughs> okay, actually... Is not good enough. Um, <coughs> there was a link and it's gone. Okay. Uh, we will put up the link to the actual app that, that hosts the data. So uh, I will leave the exploration to you. Um, come to our website whenever you feel like it. Check out the data. Uh, what I would like to spend these 10 minutes talking to you about is, is uh, why we we decided to do this kind of campaign and um, what were the main challenges. Um, I'm going to do this in reverse. What do you think are the main challenges when you are trying to conduct a social media monitoring campaign? Just, I throw it out there. Get the data. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Get the data. Get the data. And consolidate the data. Prepare the okay. And the lack of transparency everywhere. The lack of transparency. We're, we're getting a bit closer. Figure out what data is relevant and which is just junk data that you can't use. Figuring out what's relevant and what's junk. I would think the targeted data is very uh, hard to get. Like, like when you have tailored apps. Uh, that go to certain groups of people, how can you know about that? Right, okay. Um, these are all, so we actually encountered all of these problems. Um, and, and it turns out that the technical part of writing the code to collect the data is the easiest thing. Um, uh, nobody mentioned legal stuff. Um, Alexander here knows um, all our struggles, also figuring out what we're allowed to do, what not, and what is in that huge gray area where nobody actually really knows what you're allowed to do and what not. Um, so, so um, given that there are all these problems associated with monitoring social media, the question is why should we do it? And um, I hope you've already heard some reasons why um, from, from, um, from Maximilian, from Armin, and from Martina. Uh, I, I will just tell you a few words from my point of view as, as data scientist and um, um, sort of the, the, the person who likes to work with data, uh, why I would get involved in a project like this. So basically, you hear a lot of debate about how um, there is a lot of hate speech online, how some people are disadvantaged, how it's being hijacked. Um, there are all sorts of stories about fake news. And, and actually, in the middle of all this debate, we hear, or I personally hear very little actual facts. And I feel like this is a discussion that we should be having, and when we have this discussion, it should be uh, an informed discussion. So this is, this is why I, uh, I like to be involved in projects like this. Now, um, I was involved in, in two different projects. There was the Amnesty Italy project and the Vibrobachtung, and I, I just want to uh, speak a little bit to, to the differences in the two projects because, again, um, there is a lot of data out there that you can collect, and if you don't know where you're going with it, 
then you will not get smarter. Uh, so, actually, these two projects had had different focuses. The Amnesty Italy project had a focus, which was trying to demonstrate the relationship between what politicians say and what kinds of reactions they got. So, um, and their project was very much about sentiment analysis. Now, um, how do you think we did this sentiment analysis? Automatic tools is a possibility. What other ways are there to, to find sentiment analysis? Activists. Activists. Okay. So we actually uh, did this with activists. Why would we do this with activists? Well, how many sentiment analysis tools do you know that work in Italian? <laughs> there are not very many. Um, can you imagine what are the issues you run into if you are asking activists? <coughs> Having a certain to bias. This, to do the sentiment analysis. <coughs> Having a certain bias is one. Yeah? What's an even bigger challenge? Getting enough people. Getting enough people, but fortunately that wasn't my problem. <laughs> You're just interpreting sentiments differently? Yes. Absolutely. Okay, so it turns out that, well, hate speech or even offensive speech is a very personal thing. Um, and trying to get people to agree on what is hate, what is offensive, <coughs> is a very difficult task. Actually, it's even difficult to get yourself to agree with yourself. We also tested, we also tested this. How consistent are people in their own rating? So I don't know whether it's uh, you know before lunch and after lunch you rate differently. But uh, yes. So for example, what would be a way to avoid this? To have people with different points of view or to run the same uh, unit to value through different people so you don't have to you don't, you don't need to have all of them to agree but just have a mix of all different opinions yeah. so you have something not biased. So that's that is in the end what we did. Okay, people people are inconsistent on an individual basis basis, but if you get enough people, then on average this is a very Nice, um, very technical term, but on average, people do become consistent and predictable. Um, but also, this is the one advantage that algorithms have over people. Okay, algorithms are consistent. The problem with an algorithm is it can be consistently very wrong. As um, as we discovered, because we tried to run an algorithmic sentiment analysis uh, on the Wahlbeobachtung uh, project, and um, basically it was just not good enough. Um, one of the reasons being that there are by now some reasonable sentiment analysis tools in Hochdeutsch. But the stuff that you know we have here on Twitter and Facebook is not necessarily Hochdeutsch. So uh, it is not captured well by, by existing sentiment analysis tools. However, um, one thing that we could automate, and we did, uh, thank you very much to Thomas who is sitting here, So that you can you can actually be a part of this project, and um, maybe you can help us uh, determine some of some of these is a topic analysis. 
Okay, so um, what you can do is take massive amounts of data and uh, run, it through, run it through some algorithm which can help you determine, sort of split up this uh, body of texts into a given number of topics. And uh, we did this with with the with the texts and comments that we collected for the Vardu Wartong. And I will show you now. the computer doesn't know the topic by name as we would. It just says number nine, that's a topic. It is then up to us, the humans, to interpret what exactly is this topic about. Um, Thomas and Martin were so good as to go through and, and actually label them, but let's see if you agree with their labeling. So I'm just going to pick a topic here, number nine. And what you see, wait, uh, this would be, you're right. Yes, oh, you're right. You see a list of words. These are the words which were uh, considered most important for this topic. What would you call this topic? <laughs> Left? I've heard. Any others? Going once? Going twice? <laughs> And so, okay. So we take this as, as sort of a left wing, maybe KPU. Wir können, wasn't that their slogan? <laughs> Guys, come on. Okay, so you thought you were just going to come here and listen to us talk. Um, so, all right, now let's take a look at another one. Over here. Guys, and? <laughs> yeah, that's rather a blue right. Okay. So, um, it looks like. I'm sorry, can you, can you, uh, can you let us, let us see the legend? What's the blue bar and, and the red bar? Um, let's see. I think I have to scroll down here. So, so the blue bar tells you um, how frequently this word occurs overall in all, all the collected comments, and the red bar is how, how frequent it is just within this topic. So, um, this, this is an example of something that is possible to automate, um, and it, it does work better than humans because it is consistent, it can deal with really large amounts of text, um, and by the way, uh, do you know how, how much we collected in these three weeks? How much was it? How many posts? How many posts we collected in three weeks of campaign? Anybody want to venture a wild guess? How, how active do you think people are on, on Twitter and Facebook? How many pages were in your sample anyway? Like <coughs> Facebook pages? Uh, Facebook and Twitter uh, we followed about 105 accounts. Three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. 
billion, I guess. Very good. Mm -hmm. we, we collected 1.1 million mm -hmm. comments by uh, generic users and over 30, I think it was 36,000 posts by the politicians mm -hmm. in three weeks. I really wonder, don't they have anything else to do? Mm -hmm. um, Where, what were the other accounts that were not uh, politician accounts? Um, the, the main press and, and the um, largest influencers, so mostly uh, prominent journalists. So could, could you divide between um, owned information and earned information, like the information that they gave themselves, the parties and the politicians, and the, when you say you have press in, you know, the press in there that, that is like earned information that someone talks about them, could you divide between the two? Do you mean in the topics? Right? Yes. Could, could you see this? So what are they saying about themselves and who is talking about them or what, what are people? Um, not sure if we got that. If the topic's really differentiated between mm -hmm. what other people are saying. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it was a large amount of data. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is about 100 pages? For one million comments, you would have had uh, ten thousand per page. Ten thousand comments per page. Some pages you have more than ten thousand. Yeah, but for example, what we don't see here, and there was much more of this in Italy, is the uh, overwhelming dominance of one person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, even though, actually, if you look through the data, you will see that there is uh, some parties which are more successful and have more activity. Um, one example in Italy, this is the social media is completely dominated by one person. Right? And, and this will uh, make for a totally different kind of social media landscape. Okay, so I think for now this is enough. Um, we've had four people talking a lot at you and there's a lot of stuff to digest. And I would like to end it here and open it up to a discussion.